Uh, Doug Sauter called me. He was in Canada. It was actually almost two years ago. It was in uh, August, It was in September, two years ago. And he said he'd seen a statue of a man overlooking a city that had been a big influence of uh, uh, on that city. And he he said, I, I want to try to get some people together and let's do a statue of Bob. He's affected so many people uh, in the state and around the country and around the world. And so. Uh, it just kind of evolved from that. It was a very interesting process because uh, a lot of his friends had gotten together and they were going to give this to Bob for uh, a surprise birthday party. So I had to sculpt Bob Funk without Bob Funk being able to be any part of it. So it was very interesting. It was very challenging. Uh, one thing that you do, especially in outdoor sculpture, you don't sculpt anybody's face or feature with their mouth open and smiling. And nobody had a picture of Bob when he wasn't smiling. So it was, I was trying to create something that doesn't happen. So uh, anyway, that was, a, that was a one thing that was very interesting on it. When I was sculpting, it was in clay, a, a petroleum based clay. And the clay probably weighed actually as much as what the bronze does. There's about pro, close to 500 pounds of bronze in this statue and a little under 10 foot tall. Uh, I had measured length, but it's probably nine to ten foot, so it's it's relatively square. Well, the special feature for sure was I got to try to emulate or replicate a saddle that I had created for Bob about ten years ago, which was one of the most intricate saddles that I've ever had a chance to build. There was a, a lot of a silver. There was a sculpture, actually a sculpture on the back of that. They had a, a bull here that was a world champion and, and I got to use him for my model and I sculpted and applied that to the back of the saddle. So that's one thing that made it kind of different compared to a lot of other saddles that you see. Or even, I've made a few that have had sculptures on the back. Uh, but that was one thing that was really interesting and duplicating, you know, when I built the original saddle, it took us a, took me about 10 minutes to figure out what I wanted to do and probably took me and my silversmith thousands of hours to complete. So uh, the silver work on his, of course, was clay. And uh, so it was interesting. It was, it was quite a process, something I hadn't done before as far as trying to replicate silver in clay. So it was, it was neat. It was interesting. It was a quite an honor and a, and a privilege to, to do something. You know, you do a sculpture and a piece of bronze, a piece of leather. Uh, a saddle will be around here for 100 years. That bronze could be around here for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's kind of neat, you know, knowing that what I did then will, will be here forever.